artificial wines, etc. The method of making artificial wines, of recovering faded and such wines as have lost their colour, and of racking, sweetening, etc. Of small wines, meliorated. It is certain that weak wines may be raised and improved on the rich lees of wine that is drawn off, and indeed it is common to draw off such small wines and put them on such lees. By this, the profit of the vintners is greatly enlarged. We also see that wine is fed with proper food, as sweet flesh, salt of tartar, or the sweet and volatile spirit of tartar, but more especially with the quintessence of wine, essential salts, prepared oils, herbs, and things of an aromatical nature. Why then may not small wine be greatly bettered by the animal spirit or quintessence extracted from other wines? For the animal part of wine only, and nothing else, can increase the strength of wine. If the quintessence be drawn out of one small wine and added to another, it will make that rich, though the other is altogether impoverished. For this reason, it is better that one be lost, which may serve for vinegar, than both remain useless. This cannot be so well demonstrated by words as by practice, for which reason we shall give some examples to prove what has been said. To make artificial claret. Take the juice or water of clary, Distill it in a cold still, one part. Red streak cider, half a part. Malagar raisins, beaten in a mortar, six pounds. The fat mother of claret, one pound. Cover them in a close vessel for fifteen days to ferment. Then draw off the liquor into another vessel, and to every gallon add half a pint of the juice of mulberries, blackberries, or gooseberries, and a pint of the spirit of clary. To the whole, put three spoonfuls of flour, and the whites of two new-laid eggs with a dram of isinglass. Beat these together, and add to the liquor two pounds of the syrup of clary, and it will refine down and be very rich not distinguishable from the right claret, unless by those well skilled in wines. To make artificial malagar, canary wine, etc. Take a cask that has been well seasoned with right old malagar, new trim it, and hoop it strong, leaving it open at one end, to which open end a close cover must be fitted to take off and put on at pleasure, and keep it in all seasons in a warm place. Fill it with spring or conduit water, and to every gallon of water add six pounds of the best Malaga raisins, well bruised, and sprinkle on every twenty gallons a handful of calx wine. Then place the cover close, and keep it warm with cloths fastened about it, and let it continue so four or five days to work and ferment. After that, open it to see if the raisins are floating on the top of the water. If you find they are, press them down again, and do so every four or five days, letting them stand three weeks or a month. Then tap the vessel three or four inches above the bottom, and try if the liquor tastes and if it does not, let it stand longer, till it has got the true flavour. Then draw it off into another cask that has had malagar in it, and to every twenty gallons put a pint of the best aqua vitae, a quart of elecant wine, and two new-laid eggs beaten together, and let it stand in a vaulted cellar or such like place till it be fit for drinking. If it wants sweetness, put in a little fine loaf sugar, and it will abundantly answer your expectation. 
and this dashed with a little white wine or brisk pippin cider may pass for canary and thus not only artificial malagar may be made but other artificial wines for it cannot but be supposed that an ingenious person may by these examples invent and prepare other sorts of wines different from these in taste for having once got a knowledge of the different herbs that bear a similarity to the different sulphur of the true wine whether styptic acid mild luscious fat or balsamic so must the imitation of the different sorts of wines be whether ribella tent rapidavia canary or any others as for white wine or rhenish you may make them of sweeter or tartar ciders as you find in the directions given for making artificial claret baiting the colouring though you must be at the labour and the charge of finding them more on purpose to keep up a good body to restore pricked wines take the wine down to the lees in another cask where the lees of good wine are fresh then take a pint of strong aqua vitae scrape half a pound of yellow beeswax into it and by heating the spirit over a gentle fire melt the wax then dip it in a cloth and set it on fire with a brimstone match put it in flaming at the bung and stop the cask close to restore wines decayed by too much vent or souring stir it well with a flat-ended stick till you have removed it in all parts and made it ferment but do not touch the lees then pour in a pint of aqua vitae and stop it up close and at the end of ten days it will be tolerably restored wine that is decayed by too much vent may be recovered by putting burning brimstone or hot crusts of bread into it for musty wines or such as have got a twang of the cask to remedy this rack it off upon lees of rich wine of the same sort then put into a bag four ounces of the powder of lenoral berries and two ounces of the filings of steel let it hang by a string in the middle of the wine and so by degrees lower it as you draw it off to prevent wine from turning put a pound of butter melted in fair water into your cask pretty warm and stop it close to take away the ill scent of wine bake a long roller of dough stuck well with cloves let it thoroughly bake and hang it in your cask and it will remove the ill scent from the wine by gathering it to itself to remedy a bitter or sour scent in wine take half a peck of barley and boil it in two quarts of water till one half of the water be wasted strain it let it settle well and pour it into the wine cask stirring it without touching the lees to soften green wine put in a little vinegar wherein litheridge has been well steeped and boil some honey to draw out the wax strain it through a cloth and put a quart of it into a tears which will improve it in summer especially some when they perceive the wine turning put in a stone of unslacked lime this will make it very good to keep wine from souring boil a gallon of wine with some beaten oyster shells and crab's claws calcined strain out the liquid part and when it is cool put it into green wine and it will give it a pleasant lively taste to sweeten wine fill it upon the lees put a handful of the flowers of clary and infuse in it add a pound of mustard seed dry ground which must be sunk in a bag to the bottom of the cask 
to make artificial malmsey take english gallingal and cloves of each a dram beat them to a powder and infuse them a day and a night in a pint of aqua vitae in a wooden vessel kept close covered then put it into good claret and it will make twelve or fourteen gallons of fine malmsey in five or six days the drugs may be hung in a bag in the cask to make wine settle well take a pint of wheat and boil it in a quart of water till it bursts and becomes very soft then squeeze it through a new linen cloth and put a pint of the liquid part into a hogshead of unsettled white wine and it will fine it to make wormwood wine take a good brisk rhenish wine or white wine and put into it a pound of roman wormwood in a bag clean stripped from the stalks and well dried and in ten or twelve days infusion it will give it a taste and curious colour beyond what it had before this may be done as it is drawn by dropping three or four drops of chemical spirit or oil of wormwood into a quart of wine to make rough claret put a quart of claret to two quarts of sloes and bake them in a gentle oven till they have stewed out a great part of their moisture then pour off what is liquid and squeeze out the rest and half a pint of this will make ten gallons rough to recover the lost colour of white wine or rhenish wine to do this effectually rack the wine from the lees and if the colour of the wine be faint and tawny put in cognac lees and pour the wine upon them rolling and shaking them together a considerable time in the cask in ten or twelve days rack off the wine and it will be of a proper colour and drink brisk and fine to prevent the decay of lowering wine take an ounce of roach alum powder draw out four gallons of the wine and strew the powder over it beat it well for the space of half an hour then fill up the cask and set it on broach being careful to let it take vent by this means in three or four days you will find it a curious brisk wine to rack wine this is done with such instruments as are useful and appropriated to the manner of doing it and cannot be so well described by words as by seeing it done however observe this in doing it let it be when the wind sets full north and the weather is temperate and clear that the air may the better agree with the constitution of the wine and make it take more kindly it is likewise most proper to do it in the increase of the moon when she is under the earth and not in full height etc to make wines scent well and give them a curious flavour take two ounces of powder of sulphur half an ounce of calamus incorporate them well together and put them into a pint and a half of orange water let them steep in it a considerable time and then drawing off the water melt the sulphur and calamus in an iron pan and dip in it as many rags as will soak it up which put into the cask then rack your wine and put in a pint of rose water and stopping the hogshead roll it up and down half an hour after which let it continue still two days and by so ordering any gascoigne or red wine it will have a pleasant scent and taste to mend wines that rope when you have set your cask a brooch place a coarse linen cloth before the bore then put in the linen and rack it in a dry cask add five or six ounces of the powder of alum roll and shake them sufficiently together 
and upon settling it will be fined down and prove a very pleasant wine both in taste and scent to mend white or rhenish wines if these wines have an unpleasant taste the best way is speedily to draw them off and to one half of the wine put two gallons of new milk a handful of bay salt and as much rice mix and beat them well together for half an hour with a staff or paddler then fill up the cask and when you have rolled it well turn it over in the lees and two or three days after you may broach and it will drink very fine and brisk another way to mend white or rhenish wines take a gallon or more of morning's milk put it into the cask and mix it well with rolling when you perceive it is quite settled put in three or four ounces of isinglass and about a quarter of a pound of loaf sugar fine scraped then fill up the hogshead or other cask and roll it four or five times over and this will bring it to a colour and fineness to meliorate or better vicious wine take a pint of clarified honey a pint of water wherein raisins of the sun have been well steeped and three quarters of a pint of good white wine or claret according as the colour of your wine is let them simmer and boil a little over a gentle fire to the consumption of a third part taking off the scum as fast as it rises put it very hot into the vitiated wine and let it stand the bunghole being open then put a little bruised mace nutmegs and cloves into a linen bag and hang it in the wine by a string for three or four days by so doing either new or old wine will not only be fined but much bettered for by this means they are restored from their foulness and decay and yield a good scent and taste you may to make this work more perfect when you take out the spice hang in a small bag of white mustard seed a little bruised to make ice in summer for cooling wine take a stone bottle that will hold about three quarts of water put into it three ounces of refined saltpetre half an ounce of florence orris and fill it with water boiling hot stop it close and immediately let it down into a well where it must remain three or four hours and when you break the bottle you will find it full of hard ice or for want of this opportunity dissolve a pound of nitre in a pail of water and it will cool your bottles exceedingly general observations take salt of tartar and pour distilled vinegar on it till it is associated every time you draw off the phlegm and then distill it into a coated retort by degrees and rectify the oil through the spirit of vitriol which will render it lucid fragrant and very pleasant a small quantity of the powder put in a linen rag and hung in the cask will refresh and meliorate if not recover foul pricked or faded wine in a short time wines may also be enriched by essential and fragrant oils made in such a manner as to incorporate with water or spirits of wine or other wine after being diluted by proper fermentation they are easily united and the body of the wine much enriched it is necessary to observe that although we have been very exact in specifying the particular quantity of each ingredient used in the making as well as mending the wines treated of yet every man's palate should be consulted by those who are employed to do the business and your own judgment will direct you how to lessen or increase any part in proportion according to the taste of the employer 
End of section 26